Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with mighty hand to meet Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I welcome you to Mass on this feast day of St. Catherine of Siena, patron of Italy, patron of Europe, a doctor of the Church. I'm offering this Mass to repose as a soul of P.K. Curie. Eternal rest, but unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. At the age of five, Catherine reports a vision of Christ, seated in glory, flanked by Peter and Paul. When Catherine's sister died, her parents wanted her to marry her sister's widower, but she refused, taking a vow of virginity. She fasted and she cut her long hair in protest. Catherine wanted to live an active, prayerful life, but outside of the convent walls, wishing to join the Third Order Dominicans, and eventually her father agreed. At the age of 21, she describes in her letters her mystical marriage with Jesus Christ, and in doing so, she receives her permission to enter the public life of the world. She rejoins her family and begins helping the poor, taking care of them in hospital, earning her a group of followers, she becomes spiritual director to people from every walk of life, including nobles and politicians. She found herself drawn into the politics of the day, becoming a strong advocate of clergy reform and calling the people to repentance and renewal. Her holiness attracted many, and she became to the notice of the Pope, and St. Catherine is credited in playing a significant role of persuading Pope Gregory uh, the 11th in Avignon to return the papacy to Rome. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Man of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who sent, set Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of the Church, grant through her intercession that your people participating in the mystery of Christ may ever exalt in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
But if we live our lives in the light, as he is in the light, we are in union with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. If we say we have no sin in us, we are deceiving ourselves and refusing to admit the truth. But if we acknowledge our sins, then God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and purify us from everything that is wrong. To say that we have never sinned is to call God a liar and to show that his word is not in us. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul give thanks to the Lord. My soul give thanks to the Lord. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. My soul give thanks to the Lord. It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. My soul give thanks to the Lord. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. His wrath will come to an end. He will not be angry forever. My soul be thanks to the Lord. As a father has compassion on his sons, the Lord has pity on those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are dust. My soul be thanks to the Lord. But the love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who hold him in fear. His justice reaches out to children's children when they keep his covenant in truth. My soul, My soul be thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal them. Come to me, all you who labour and overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A repeating theme from the epistles of St. John. That which we have heard from Jesus, we cannot keep it to ourselves. It must be declared to others so that their joy and our joy may be complete. Jesus' death and resurrection has brought us into the light, making visible the truth of his invisible presence amongst us. And that has consequences for our spiritual lives and that universal call to holiness that we all share. Both Christ's human birth and his sacrificial death show that his life is one of humble obedience and suffering. 
In doing so, he breaks into the darkness and renews the cry of creation. Let there be light. In Jesus Christ, there is no darkness. And so St. John encourages us to let go of sin and falsehood. To all those attitudes and behaviours that prevent God living in us. If we say we have no sin in us, we are deceiving ourselves and refusing to admit the truth. Divine wisdom enters into our heart, ensuring that our conscience is illuminated with the truth, so that we can come and make a courageous confession of our sins. It is absolutely true that we may claim a primacy of conscience in deciding on whether we are living out the moral life. But we also have an obligation to ensure that our conscience is properly formed and is not in error, especially as much of what we once held as abhorrent is now considered legal in many sovereign states, which have most sadly embraced what St. John Paul II called the culture of death. Out of the mouth of babes often comes a truthful observation. In our pride, the words of eternal life can be hidden from the learned and the clever and be revealed to mere children. This then is why the gospel must be preached, because time and time again it's been proved that reason alone is insufficient to understand the true dignity and glory of human destiny. Think of the so-called periods of enlightenment, which ultimately led to the bloodshed of the French Revolution and atheistic communism. They thought they were bringing something new and clever to the world. Now perhaps there were some class abuses that needed dealing with, but retribution is no basis for forming a moral society. In our personal enlightenment, we already have the sun, the moon, and candles, and even oh. electric lights to illuminate the path of life. And yet, we need the light of Christ, first given to us in holy baptism, to light the way to heaven. That light radiates in the gospel, in the lives of the saints, and most especially in the celebration of Mass, the representation of the sacrifice which takes away the sins of the world. In all the sacraments of the church, our Lord has provided us with the reality of his presence. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Those entrusted with preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith, and yes, that's the bishops, that's the priests, but it's also teachers, it's also parents, in fact, it's absolutely every single Christian. We must not allow pride to get into that teaching. We mustn't be inventing new interpretations that are incompatible with sacred scripture and apostolic tradition. Pray that especially the shepherds of the church remain true to the orthodoxy of the teachings so that we may all receive the blessings of the Lord which are reserved for obedient and faithful children of God. On this day, on every day, may we choose to walk in the light of the Lord. Such a life is a rejection of pride, because pride extinguishes charity. Instead, humility strengthens our love of God and our charity to our neighbour. And the greatest acts of humility, perhaps, is to come before the Lord in the sacrament of reconciliation and say to the Lord, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. In unburdening our sins, Christ restores and reinvigorates our faith, hope, love and devotion, that desire to live the life of grace, by picking up our cross again, making us fit for the kingdom. Perhaps we've heard the priest say these optional but it's very encouraging words, especially after a very courageous or difficult confession. May the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints, whatever good you do, whatever suffering you endure, may this heal your sin, help you to grow in holiness, 
and reward you with eternal life. The Lord is reaching you, sin. Go in peace. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good and holy nature. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Siena, with St. Mary Magdalene, St. Martha, St. Richard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For our heaven, our heaven, and our heaven, of our Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
if we walk in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ, 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 the body of Christ. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confirm the eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Holy Mass at 11 a.m. tomorrow on Tuesday as normal. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.